So I was thinking about these themes of Fourth of July and America and living at the in the middle of the storm. And know how to merge these two together. I think our our independence, the Revolutionary War, war is probably, even though I've never experienced it, one of the biggest storms we could wake up and find ourselves in in the world. And there was a story that I read once out of this book. It was called, it was in my early 20s, it was called Saint Germain on Alchemy for the Adept in the Aquarian Age. I was like, oh. <laughs> so I bought it and read it, ate it up, loved it. And there was a good part in there where they were talking about the birthing of America and specifically breaking away from rule of monarch into some co-creative um, government and way of living and being together as a spiritual movement and all that went into that. So a lot of that inspired the beginning part of that poem. And there were stories in there about uh, a story in particular about George Washington. And he was the general of the Continental Army. And he was out in, in the war on the battlefield. And there were times when he would re receive reports of the conditions that his men were having to endure and would just tear and sob in front of his other higher superior army people. <laughs> And there were stories that he would often go out into the thickets to find a place to be alone and pray when the times were tough. And one story in particular is about a time when an angel came to him and he had a vision. And in this vision, the whole world was laid out, at least with America and the Atlantic and Europe and Asia and Africa. And this angel stood within the vision and pointed and said, son of the Republic, look and learn. And picked some water up out of the Atlantic and put some on Europe and some on America. And the storm began to brew and it came across the ocean over to America. And the storm was war. And at some point blew a, a bugle and skies opened up and the storm dissipated. And then the angel stood again and pointed and said, son of the Republic, look and learn. And over out of Africa, like a shadowy specter came from the coastline across the Atlantic, over and set across America. And there was a battle raging again, a storm of war. And out of that, another angel stood out of the middle with a crown that said Union on it, holding a flag. And on the bottom of the flag, it said, Remember ye our brethren. And that storm dissipated. And then the angel stood and three times blew the trumpet and reached into the waters and sprinkled some across Europe and Africa and Asia. And all three of these had dark clouds that began to merge and rolled across the Atlantic and came across the Americas. And there was raging storm going on. And then all of a sudden the skies broke up and with the light of a thousand suns shone upon America and angels descended and joined the battle. And the storm dissipated and broke away and rolled back across. Wow, right? So I'd look this up online. That story is out there. It's out there in different places. And a lot of the authorities uh, pretty much state that it was a story that was made up to promote uh, patriotism propaganda, because the idea of it is that God is, America is like, God has blessed America as chosen people or something, and the whole world united cannot defeat her. So that was that. 
However, I only just learned that. I read this story of a very different kind of book. And I want to share his words. Those who understand the real purpose of prophecy realize that events of the future are foreseen, not because they are predestined, but because they offer enlightened men and women the opportunity to unite and determine that the impending peril which could come to pass does not, because we take action and because we pray. It is up to our generation to decide whether or not the third vision will occur. And the key to our victory is in our love, our unity, and our wise and judicious use of our spiritual and material resources. But to call upon the intercession of the Lord and his hosts is to ensure the continuing blessing of the invisible hand, all too visible in time of trouble. So I share all that because we are creating our future. And I believe that the more we engage in spiritual interaction and in being at the eye of the storm and knowing our divine identity, the less we have to call on spiritual intervention. We create our worlds. Let us do so in a bold way. Thanks.